Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. You are joining us in video number four of four. We have just stamped the most beautiful stack of cards. We've got thank you. I just can't thank you enough. The little thank you heart in there. We have three of that design. That was video number one. These are Wonder Recipe number four cards. In video number two, we made two of this time for a cardigan design. And again, I just can't thank you enough. That's what I need the most, thank you cards. And this was video number two. You might be asking why three of that and two of this? Well, because the window recipe, when you cut one sheet, six by six, of each, the soft saffron, the so saffron, the mint macaron, and the clipsal coral, mix and match the pieces. That's how many cards the wonder recipe produces. Our friendship will live forever. Unlike most of the plants I've owned, and our wonder recipe makes two of that card. Now, all seven cards would make a beautiful gift, don't you think? So let's make a gift box. We're going to make this gorgeous presentation box for our cards. You can see that all seven, even though they're perfectly decked out, they're beautiful cards with twine and gems and dimensionals fit with seven envelopes in the pocket. We've got a little pocket on the side here. This is perfect for your list, whoever might be receiving these cards and some postage stamps. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start with our crumb cake pieces that will form the base of our card box. Now, this is the outer wrapper of the card box, the um, covers. It is six by 10 and a quarter. Then we have two more pieces of crumb cake here. We have one that is seven and seven eighths by four and a half. And for our little pocket, we have one that is five and three eighths by three and a quarter. Now, the template photograph will be on the project sheet. The project sheet will be on the blog, kitchentablestamper.com. Just follow the link if you're watching on YouTube to the blog. And below the embedded video, you'll see um, printable project sheet. It'll say click here to print your project sheet. Let's get our Simply Score tool and we're gonna start with our cover. Gonna pop that one in on the 10 and a quarter inch side and we're gonna score according to the template at four and a half and five and three quarters. All right, set that one aside. Next up, we'll do our little pocket. So we're gonna pop this guy in on the five and three quarter inch side. We're gonna score at half an inch and four and seven eighths. Rotate to the right and score at half an inch. And there's our little pocket. We'll set that one aside. And now our deep pocket. We're gonna put this one in on the seven and seven eighths inch side. And we're gonna score at one half, one and three quarters, six and one eighth, and seven and three eighths. Rotate to the right. We're going to score at half inch and at one and three quarters. All right, let's work all of our score lines with the bone folder. And we're gonna trim according to the template. I like to work these score lines both directions. First I do them inside out and then flip them around right side in. It's a habit that um, I formed very early in stamping and what happens is if you have a printed cardstock or designer series paper or you have a cardstock and it's dry, um, when you do the, the folding the opposite way, you get all of that stretching and maybe if there's any tearing or like fuzzy edges on the inside of your project. So we're just gonna work these really quickly, inside out and then right side in. You can just set the cover piece aside. We don't need that one yet, but we'll keep both of these pocket pieces here. 
All right, there's our two pieces, our two templates. Let's start with this bigger dude. And we're gonna trim according to the template. I like to start, you're gonna have your smallest little glue tab toward you. We're gonna start on the left side. We're gonna cut this first rectangle at an angle and then just bevel the top. That's a glue tab there. Then we're gonna cut out these two. There's a square and a rectangle. And we're gonna cut across, cutting off the square line, that first score line, and cut off at an angle. Then we're gonna cut straight up this long rectangle and then make a small angle cut and take out the bulk. All right, same thing on the other side. We'll make an angle cut, bevel the top edge a little bit, cut out these two across, cutting off the first score line, up, cutting off the score line, and then an angle. There's your first pocket. Put that one aside and let's work the second one. This one's super simple. We're gonna cut out these corner squares and give them kind of an angle cut so that they bevel nicely. So angled and remove the square, bevel the top edge a little bit, and then same thing here, cut an angle, cut an angle, cut an angle. Now, here's where the fun part is. I don't see center very well. So I'm gonna grab my Simply Score tool once again, and we're gonna cut this half inch. All right, so let's put our pockets aside for just a minute here. We're going to do our knit together backgrounds next. So we've got a couple of pieces here. And just for the sake of the video, I already did my pocket pieces. These are two and three eighths by four. You need two of those. This is five and a half by four. You need one of those. All of them are gonna get this knit together texture. So we're gonna take the background stamp. It's knit together. It's from the annual catalog, Stampin' Up's annual catalog. We're gonna stamp crumb cake on crumb cake. So let's go ahead and ink up that stamp. When you've got good ink coverage, you're gonna drop your panel on. You can do the two pocket pieces at one time, which is pretty awesome. The stamp is big enough and the panel pieces are small enough. Gonna burnish until the image transfers. Make sure you use extra care on the edges, right where the end of the paper is, and then down the middle. Make sure that you don't get a blank middle hold with one hand and just kind of burnish with the other. And with this method, you'll never have a blank middle. See, we've got a nice complete image. Grab our pocket pieces again, and we're gonna glue them on with some liquid glue. All right, this pocket's the easy one, right on the big panel, center it. Now the other pocket, you're going to, still in the, in the largest panel, but it's centered there, just like that. All right, we've got our sweater pattern on. Let's get our um, circle so we can punch a little thumb notch. Going to first mark center, I like to use my um, simply score tool for this. You can also use the Stampin' Up! grid paper. It's got a centering ruler on it. Just use the stylus, zero, and then you're gonna line up so that from either side is zero, so your top row is your centering ruler. You wanna go like a two, and then use the six to mark center. I just put a little divot in there. And same thing with this pocket. You've got an extra eighth there, so your your score is not gonna end up in a groove, it's gonna end up on a bump. So make sure it's gonna be like 3 16 like two and 3 16 for it to be center. All right, we've got that. Let's punch out those little um, notches for easier access to our cards and content. I'm just gonna line up that center Go about halfway. This is my retired one and a half inch circle punch. You can use a little die here and just lay it halfway 
and give it a crank. If you use something like stylish shapes, then you'd have a little perforation at the pocket, which would look kind of cute. Hmm, my pocket, one is deeper than the other. One of the notches is deeper than the other. I'm gonna go back and give this guy just a little extra trim. There, I think that's a little closer, I think. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> now, let's grab our cover. We're gonna set aside our um, cover piece. We're gonna add the pockets first, and we'll need some tear and tape for that. We're gonna go tear and tape on these squares. And then on the small glue tabs. Oh, look at that, I didn't cut a little angle here. I don't think it's gonna be too big a deal, but now they're all the same. And across each of these half inch glue tabs, right, left, and bottom. Then same here, each of the glue tabs, right, left, and bottom. And you'll notice that I'm doing them all on the front side, the same side as our pattern. All right, for the front pocket, for the inside front, this one's going to be the easier one. So let's just knock that one out, peel the release, and then fold up. I like to do the sides in first and then the bottom up. I can grab that tear and tape because when you're sliding something that's maybe almost as wide as the pocket, it's less likely to get caught on this edge because it's tucked behind. So that's my, um, I don't know, the method to the madness. We're gonna just center that right on the bottom. There's gonna be just a hair of space right and left. And so do about the same up from the bottom. Might be a 16th of an inch. We got one pocket in. Now this pocket, we're gonna assemble the box part of the pocket first. We've got our squares. Let's bring them up and make a box. Now we've got our box formed. Let's go ahead and remove the half inch liners, or the liners on the half inch glue tabs. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll fold the inside right and left and then the bottom. You wanna make sure that you keep this nice and square as you assemble. And then you'll bring it to the opposite side and center it with a little hair right and left and bottom. When you've got it, just kinda of tap it, turn it, and then use your bone folder to secure, burnish that adhesive from those tabs. Be careful not to run your bone folder through the bottom of the box. I've done it, it's terrible. All right, now I've got some ribbon here. It's a wide white frayed ribbon, about 30 inches. What I like to do is to make sure that my bow turns out nice proportions. I like to close it up empty and get my ribbon exactly where I want it, get my bow so that it has nice large loops and tails and everything's pretty equal. You can still adjust at this point if you want to, so this side's just a little bit long. So what I'll do is I'll pull some of that extra length. You wanna keep as much of the length as possible because somebody opening and closing this that doesn't have the best dexterity for bows, you don't wanna give them a short ribbon on top of that, you know? It might be hard enough to tie a bow to close it, but if they're giving them a bow to tie to open and close and it's with short ribbon, that's gonna be um, kind of a challenge. So I do, I like to close it up entirely, get it looking really good nice big loops, nice long tails, everything where I want it to be. And then here's the trick that I do, and you can take it or leave it. I like to grab my tear and tape adhesive. And what I'll do is on the spine, I'll slide the ribbon down. I'll add ribbon to the, or I'll add tear and tape to the spine. Remove the liner. 
then I'll bring the ribbon back up where I want it when it's where I want it that's a little bit high then I'll kind of smoosh the ribbon into the tape then open the box and going straight across from where it's tacked to the spine I'll add some tear and tape lift the liner and then bring the ribbon across and same thing on the back so directly across from where it's coming from the spine all the way across the little box oh, I'm a little bit longer than the box here so what we want to do is remove the liner and then lift that up a little bit and fold it back so that it doesn't go past the edge and then we can now you've got your ribbon attached with tear and tape and you can gently use your bone folder to grab that adhesive from the inside and there my friends is if you don't love it now's your chance to adjust it a little bit mine was a little bit downhill now you have your perfect little card box let's go back to this front liner we're going to add the front liner with dimensional adhesive and we're going to use a lot, a shameless amount because it's going to help us further secure the ribbon and it's going to hold that beautiful little um, card front, that knit together layer up and give a little, little boost. I like the edges of the mini Stampin' Dimensionals for this. We're gonna cut in half and then across. And we're going to peel off that large edge right there. And we're gonna use it to secure that ribbon. See, this way it chew. So now that ribbon is secured with tear and tape and then further secured with some dimensionals. Then I'm gonna take some of the standard size dimensionals going to turn my little thing over here and I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals like a triangle here 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 and here and then I'm going to go at the corners here here at the edge here here and here We've got kind of strategic support and we're set up so that our adhesive shouldn't show anywhere but still have a fair amount of security and support. We're going to go ahead and pop this guy on centered and then I'll open it up and burnish those dimensionals awesome now you've done the hard part if you're not new to this series if you've seen the time for a cardigan card then <laughs> the rest is pretty much decorating but the nice part is is we're going to use some elements again and it's going to add a nice finishing touch to the set so we're going to start out with our die cutting here which is sweet sorbet it's the second largest scallop circle and the third from largest smooth circle from basic white and we're going to speckle those with the little spots from the quiet meadow stamp set and the nice part about this is we're repeating elements throughout the design we've got the speckle that's on every card we've got the circles that are on every card we've got the circles on the outside of the card box and what that does is it brings everything together it looks like a cohesive set but then when you have different size pieces of designer series paper different images and sentiments some of the cards are landscape some of them are portrait you really start to develop kind of a neat um, cohesive 
but individual look, which is just um, so important to keeping things fresh when you're stamping. I don't like to mass produce things, but I do love the wonder recipes where each element, the box, the cards, all have some, some things in common that make it easy, but they also have their own individual um, individuality. All right, so we've got some designer series paper scraps here. Now this is not from the Wonder Recipe. These are just some scraps, and it's a really good way to use up your scraps and uh, layouts like this. And of course, this could translate right into a card layout also. This one is four inches by one. This one is four and three quarters by one. This one is four inches by one and three eighths. All right, let's go ahead and adhere them to our card box and we can add our die cut layers too. I'm gonna use some liquid glue. All right, so we're gonna add our designer series paper and just kind of toggle them. I like to do the outside edges first and then bring the middle one over and then do any adjusting. Liquid glue is your friend. And then we can again turn this open and burnish those down. And then we can add our circle with some liquid glue. All right, there's our circle. Okay. Burnish that little dude down. Now we've got a bit more stamping to do. I've got some basic white cardstock. This is just a scrap. It's kind of a large scrap, but just a scrap. We've got one piece that is 7 16 by 3. Now it's just a little bit narrower than half an inch and 3 inches wide. Let's go ahead and stamp that with time for a cardigan. We'll see if I can get it. Um, level across there with the phone between me and the paper but we want it to the right so that we have room for that little heart let's see ready no no oh not bad at all okay then we're gonna stamp two pennants and a cardigan if you're doing this as a stack if you're gonna do the whole entire project the box the cards then what you want to do is when you're stamping your cardigans for your cards, when you're stamping your pennants for your cards, stamp your typewriters and stamp your house plants, stamp all the images that you need for all the cards, then color all the images that you need for all the cards in the box, then cut all the images that you need for all the cards in the box. So you want to work this, think about this in batch work style, which makes for a very, very long video, but it's something that you'll want to do if you're making this project all at once. Now this time I'm going to try a yellow cardigan. I really liked coloring the yellow one because I did a yellow one for one of the cards in the video. And um, so we're going to do a yellow cardigan. I've got my So Saffron Dark Stampin' Blend. And I'm going to do a little bit of a outside the box blend here. I thought that the So Saffron Light and Dark left everything a little bit too light, a little bit too pastel. So with the Dark So Saffron Blend, we're gonna use Dark Daffodil Delight. And I found that that just punched it up a little bit. The yellow uh, plaid from the Gingham Cottage has like a two-tone yellow look and I think that this really complements that look of the paper when we did these two, not the same color. You know, you can blend with different colors, not just with the different shades of those colors. So, so saffron light and dark are awesome and it's a really great thing to have, but don't um, contain yourself to just those. You can go ahead and mix up some of the colors and blend them together. All right, so we did our dark on the cuffs and streaked in to make some shadows around the edges, give it some dimension. There it is. And oh, this looks a little white right there. There we go. And then I'm gonna do my pennants with mint macaron and um, sweet sorbet. So we'll do 
light sweet sorbet and I'm just going to give it a full coat and then we'll take the dark one and these are so close the shades of sorbet are very close see the little shadow we're getting as we go around but it doesn't need much to bring it together because the color the shade is so close now we're going to do mint macaron and we're going to do the same get a nice solid fill with the light mint macaron and a little shadow down the back swoop in at the corner along the bottom of the pennant and then bring them together with the light just kind of melt the two shades together with little circles now let's cut them out we're going to just fussy cut leaving a little white border like we did for the cards get them all trimmed out We're going to add dimensionals to the back of these items. I've got some minis. We're going to be careful of the pennant that goes over the sweater just a little bit here. You want to watch where you put your dimensionals. So we're going to add one to the very far end and then some more dimensionals on everybody else. All right, we're at the fourth video in this series, so I'm not gonna show this again, but I've got some little pink hearts. These are sweet sorbet. They were cut using the heart dye from Cracker and Treats. You get three every time you run this dye, and so I have some extra ones. And then I've showed this every time too. But let me show you the bag of crumb cake sprigs I have. These were cut with the bow punch and I don't know why I have so many extras but we've definitely put them to good use in this series. So we got those and our cardigan greeting. Let's do some chicken lips on the greeting. I like the Taylor tag punch for this and I'll never stop using this. It is uh, retired. It's on the clearance rack right now for $10.80 um, but it is the best way I've found to do these little chicken lip banners even if you get it off a little bit, you can see easily where it's off and correct easily. So I just love this punch for $10.80. I recommend everybody have it. Maybe even consider having a backup. Oh, I got my dimensionals all uncovered and stuck my flag to my finger. All right, so we've got some dimensionals on the back of our um, greeting and on all of our pieces. Let's bring our box in here and I'm gonna take my little leaf and I've got this little tiniest leaf pointing up and I'm going to adhere to my time for a cardigan and then take my little cardigan pop that on the circle and then pop the greeting underneath we want to see the scallops under the greeting then we can take those little flags, little pennants, and put one here and one here. So cute. Just love it. We're almost there. Let's get our envelopes and our cards. We've got seven basic white envelopes here. And our cards, let's get those guys in there. It's gonna give us a little bit of resistance as we tie up. So there's our seven cards from our Forever Friendship stamp -a stack Pop those in there. Let's tie up the bow. <laughs> Getting it all pretty for its photo shoot, right? We need a few embellishments first before we're done. But let's get this tied up at this point now we've got everything in there it's all filled now is when we're going to go ahead and trim the tails of our ribbon just a little bit the smallest trim that you can do so that you can keep as much of that ribbon intact for your recipient to open and close this box easily so just a nice clean angle cut 
and 30 inches will give you really nice size bow with this without any waist. Now, these dudes, we're gonna do our little sorbet hearts. I'm gonna put one with a half a dimensional and we're gonna put that under the leaf grating here. And I'm gonna add just a little tiny touch of dimensionals on this leaf too. So I'll take some of these little half that I've got ready and just pop them underneath some of the leaves here to give it a little bit more security. It's gonna get opened and closed and passed around. Once you give this as a gift, you bet it's gonna get passed around. So let's add some dimensionals to our leaf for a little extra, a little extra stick. One at the end there. And then I'm gonna put one over here. I'll bring my heart up a little closer. Get this little guy on with a dab of glue or a little mini glue dot, whatever you prefer. Me and liquid glue are good friends, but a mini glue dot would be perfect for these hearts. They are the perfect size. All right, slide that over a little bit more. See, I never really stick anything down too tight until I'm sure where I want it because I adjusted that heart a couple of times. Look at our red sweet sorbet cardigan and our so saffron cardigan. Let's grab our star of the show here these gorgeous opaque adhesive back gems i'm going to find something to do with all the gorgeous shades of purple here because i'm using up all the sweet sorbet i'm going to do a um, one of each size kind of sprinkling down from our hearts and then one little one coming up from our hearts kind of a diagonal sweep there and that is it you guys that was the forever friendship wonder recipe number four stamp a stack i'm um, considering doing a class packet for this one but because of the quantity of the sweet sorbet um, embellishments that we need we'll have to do it as a um, order basis you'll have to send me your order for it if um, there's enough interest and then i will order these you'll get them these packets in the new year will process them after you place your order which is a little different from what we usually do but it would include the box and the seven cards a full package of the opaque adhesive back gems if you guys have any questions about that if you're interested and you want the link email marissa at kitchen table stamper.com to shop 24 7 buzz over and see if there's still some of this awesome gingham cottage designer series paper the knit uh, together background is a must-have and forever friendship is only available while supplies last so buzz over and shop the last chance list and i will see you in the next series likely in the new year happy new year everybody thanks for watching